Don Asensio is proud of his collection of panpipes. In the town of San Miguel, in the eastern lowlands of Bolivia, panpipes are traditionally played in church on festive occasions. But the custom is dying out. Fewer and fewer young Bolivians are learning to play the liturgical music. German missionary Severin Parzinger is trying to stem that tide. With his sound recorder, pencil and paper, he's doing all he can to help the Chiquitanos preserve their musical tradition. San Miguel is in Bolivia's sparsely populated Chiquito region and has just 400 residents. Tourists seldom venture into this area of the country, even though it's part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the Jesuits established several of their world-renowned missions here. To protect the indigenous peoples from exploitation and enslavement by the Spanish colonists, they settled the Chiquitanos in villages called reductions. These flourished as cultural centers, but the dignity and respect with which the missionaries treated the native peoples inflamed the slave traders. And in 1776, the Jesuits were expelled. Their settlements disbanded. <laughs> when the Jesuits left, the musical tradition they had fostered also began to fade. Don Esteban is one of the few Chiquitanos who can still play the old songs. The 80-year-old violinist used to perform at all the special occasions in San Miguel. Brother Severin often visits Don Esteban and his wife. The elderly gentleman is an invaluable source of knowledge about the Chiquitano's musical heritage. These traditional musicians, and there are only a few of these old guys left, are custodians of an oral tradition. When one or two of the most key of them die, a whole universe of knowledge about traditional music and musical compositions will die with them. And I'm trying to prevent that from happening. I can't just stand by and watch everything disappear. Don Esteban takes Brother Severin to the chapel where he keeps his violin. At home, he says, it would not be safe from rats. Don Esteban never plays simply to entertain. For him, music has a sacred purpose. His repertoire consists wholly of liturgical music. Brother Severin has recorded some 70 melodies in this way. Today, he has asked Don Esteban to play one about the exaltation of the cross. It is yet another piece composed during the Jesuit era. When the missionaries were expelled from Bolivia, their parishioners were left to fend for themselves. Nearly a hundred years passed before priests were allowed to return. In the meantime, the native population maintained their tradition of religious processions and the old music. Don Esteban knows many of the melodies. When Brother Severin returns home, he transfers the recordings to his music archives. To become even more familiar with the melodies, he plays them himself on his own violin. In the days leading up to Easter, San Miguel is a hive of activity. A heavy figure of Christ is removed from the cross to be paraded in the streets.
This is not just a theatrical spectacle. To the faithful, they are devoutly following Christ on the final journey to his place of execution. In various processions, they accompany their Jesus through the village. The events are organized by the Cabildo, a council of elders traditionally responsible for coordinating the major religious events. Brother Severin lends a hand. The young German is a member of the Catholic Divine Word Missionary Congregation and lives in the priest's house in San Miguel. The parish priest is also a Divine Word missionary. All these preparations are definitely a spiritual exercise. The people experience them as an act of faith. You see it in the very small details, the way somebody bows in front of the cross or kisses the cross, the way the nails that will bore through Christ's hands and feet are not just placed on the table, but on a little cushion as a sign of veneration. It's not just done casually. The evening of Maundy Thursday, commemoration of the Last Supper. The village elders enter the church accompanied by a group of musicians. Don Asensio is among them. After the mass, these flautists and drummers will also accompany the procession through the village. Brother Severin has already recorded their music. This evening, he wants to document its relationship to the ceremonies. I realized very quickly that you can't understand the message of the music, you can't see it in the context, until you understand the traditions, the processions, when, what is happening and how. The main celebrant this evening is Father Miguel, the provincial superior of the Divine Word missionaries, who serve a number of parishes in this unspoiled region of Bolivia between Santa Cruz and the Brazilian border. Brother Severin's love of music is evident during the service. He learned to play the violin and the piano when he was a schoolboy, and the violin is partly responsible for his posting to Bolivia. When Severin Patzinger graduated from high school, he volunteered for community service with the Divine Word missionaries abroad. A music school in Bolivia was looking for a violinist. Patzinger applied and was accepted. When he arrived in San Miguel, he discovered that the young people were no longer interested in the church music played by their fathers and grandfathers. The tradition had survived for generations. Now its continuation seemed unlikely. Severin decided to do something about that. People saw me with my sound recorder in the music school, and I fell into conversation with some of the musicians. And I said to them, now it's only you old people. Well, I didn't put it quite like that, but that's what I meant. And they said, yes, we're old, and there are always fewer of us. But it's obvious that they long for the tradition to be passed on. On Monday, Thursday, members of the Cabildo shoulder the cross raised on a wood platform meant to represent Calvary Hill. The cross is carried through the streets together with the figure of the grieving mother Mary. All these processions and the statues that are carried are basically a legacy of the Jesuits. The chain hasn't been broken in 300 years. When I began recording, I thought I would just do a few and be done with it. And then I realized it wasn't that simple. 
At the very least, you have to describe the processions and all the traditional elements as well. Otherwise, you can't understand the music. Brother Severin doesn't just archive the recordings, he also transcribes them. He now has a whole book full of songs. It helps me to find the pieces more quickly and to compare melodies. Sometimes, for instance, I see that some parts appear in more than one composition. This is for Easter, this is for Christmas, this is for the village festival. This is for blessing food. These are pieces that are played throughout the year. This is for the exaltation of the cross. There's a song to venerate St. Joseph. And here's another one for Easter. Also, this is for Ostern. Without a motorcycle, it would take Brother Severin hours to reach one of the small villages belonging to the parish. He's on the move again, gathering material for his music archives. I run from one person to the next. Someone knows somebody who plays the pan pipes. So I pay him a visit and we get to talking. And I ask him if he's prepared to help me, if he's prepared to make a contribution. Yeah. Angel is one of the youngest musicians. He taught himself how to play the melodies, which is unusual. Even though it's only for a recording, Angel insists on wearing the appropriate attire. It includes a mirror attached to his shirt, which is meant to scare off demons. Brother Severin is very respectful of the indigenous people's traditions. That's the reason he was able to win the musicians' trust. Many were skeptical at first. What's this white guy doing recording everything? The experience of being exploited is deeply ingrained in these people, on many different levels. They're afraid of being exploited. They were apprehensive. And you have to respect that. I can only go as far as the people are willing to share their legacy with me. Initially, Severin Patzinger came to Bolivia to do community service and stayed nearly two years. But he couldn't have imagined where that would lead. The work of the missionaries in Bolivia impressed him so deeply that he decided to join the Divine Word congregation when he returned to Germany. While still a theology student, he told his superiors about his music project in Bolivia, and they encouraged him to continue it. Since the missionary's training included some field experience, they sent him back to San Miguel. For 
This is completely in the spirit of missionary work. And firstly, it demonstrates an interest in the local culture in which I'm living and working. And the attempt to understand this culture is the basis of all of our work. Good Friday. The evening procession is preceded by a kind of passion play, portraying the events leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus. The men and women become deeply involved in the suffering and death of Christ. Religious ceremonies here are strongly influenced by popular piety. When the body of the crucified Lord is laid in the tomb, for instance, Jesus is crowned with a triple tiara, the Pope's traditional headwear. We can only guess where this comes from. Presumably, there was once a statue of St. Peter here, crowned with the papal tiara, since he was believed to be the first Pope. The statue itself seems to have disappeared. Only the precious tiara remains. And who in the minds of the people could be more worthy to wear this crown than Christ? So when the body of Christ is taken down from the cross, it's now crowned with the papal tiara. Brother Severin has already recorded the melodies that are played during the procession. Now he has only to document their place in the ceremony. Of course, it's always interesting to hear the music being played during the procession itself, not just being practiced at home. How it sounds when the altar boys are ringing the little bells and when the big church bells toll as the prayers are said, to capture the music in its true context. The more Brother Severin immersed himself in the religious traditions of this region, the more he realized that the language of the Chiquitanos is one of the keys to understanding them. So he decided to learn it. An afternoon with Donna Abelina. She is teaching Brother Severin a language that fewer and fewer locals still speak. The young missionary is used to his teacher weaving a hammock during his lessons. It's her main source of income. You can see that people feel proud when somebody shows an interest in their language and culture. In the past, it was always denigrated. It was even taboo to speak Chiquitano. It wasn't accepted. It was actively discouraged in the schools. Children who spoke dialect were punished. They had to speak Spanish. And that's now changing. Somebody comes along who wants to learn the language that sends out a message. Yes, it's your identity. It's valuable. Not something you should discard, ignore, or forget. A visit to Don Asensio. Like many of his fellow musicians, he lives in very modest surroundings. His room doesn't even have a proper floor. These days, people are delighted when Brother Severin turns up with his sound recorder. They trust him. At first, the musicians only confided part of their knowledge to me so that I could make some recordings. They withheld some key pieces of music. They were afraid that once I had it all, they'd no longer be needed. They would lose their authority, their role in the community. They were afraid of being replaced by audio tape. People have started to appreciate what I'm doing here. They understand my intentions. They say to me, we've forgotten to record that, we've still got to do that. You can see that they're suddenly proud of what they can share with me. When he started this work, Brother Severin encountered a particular issue that was already familiar to him from his native Germany. 
Die Leute haben gemeint, dass da muss. The musicians claim that they need to drink alcohol or they wouldn't be able to play. It's a fact that musicians tend to drink a lot. I saw it back in Bavaria. The brass bands can't play unless you give them a beer. And it's more or less the same here. Don Asensio doesn't only have a collection of musical instruments. He also safeguards the masks worn at Easter. Everything is done according to custom. These are just oral traditions, but they're firmly embedded in the collective memory. And that's my starting point. If I want to work with the culture, especially with these religious traditions, I have to share in the lives of the people. I have to listen to their stories. Brother Severin lives in the priest's house. Father Denis from Papua New Guinea is the current pastor. The provincial superior, Father Miguel, who has always supported Severin's music project, is currently visiting. Being part of the pastoral team helps facilitate Brother Severin's contact with the parishioners. The Pascal candle, symbol of the resurrection. Brother Severin also sings in the church. As cantor, I have a different status. I'm the pastor's deputy, a person they respect. After the Easter procession, Brother Severin slips back into the role of the observer. He takes his camera and documents a strange Easter procession. It's a race between the risen Christ and his mother Mary. Or more precisely, between the two groups carrying their statues. The women carry Mary and the men carry Jesus. And even though the men are faster this time, they show deference to the mother of God. The two statues are reunited, and the happy throng returns to the church. On Easter Sunday morning, there's another unusual custom. The head of the cabildo delivers a speech in Chiquitano at the church doors. His sermon is an explanation of the message of Easter that is handed down from generation to generation. Brother Severin records it for posterity. I definitely have the impression that people are changing as a result of my interest in their language, in their traditional rites, in their music. It increases their sense of self-worth. They feel proud when they can present elements of their culture. On Easter Sunday, the music becomes more joyous and cheerful. Unfortunately, there are no violinists this year, but Don Asensio's masks are put to good effect. They represent the murderers of Jesus, who are now ashamed of their actions and hide their faces. Then the musicians parade through the village. Playing the panpipes and drums at the same time demands a lot of skill, but Don Asensio is no longer afraid that these centuries-old traditions will die out. The aim of this documentation, this cultural project, is of course to build a bridge and to make the material available. If in 10 years someone says, we miss it, it was so beautiful, but the man who played it has died, we can't dig him up, but we'd like to resurrect the traditions. Well, then all the material that I've collected will be there. There's a party at the parish center. 
It's a way of thanking all those who played a role in the commemoration of the death and resurrection of Christ. Brother Severin is here too. His work carries the hope that a tradition that has shaped San Miguel for 300 years will continue. All of a sudden they're saying, it can't disappear. It's our identity, our culture, our roots. We can't deny ourselves that. And the aim of my work is to support them as their awareness grows.